played. And just like that, already Team Ice, they're 1-0 up in this best of five series. Now, really curious to see who they're going to send out next because it was a top laner taking on a jungler. And in fact, we already have the next two coming up here. It's going to be Heredi from Japan, the 80 carry of the team, taking on the 80 carry of the other team. It's going to be Evan RL. So we have AD carry versus AD carry. And this is going to be another very interesting matchup, largely because Heredi... He wasn't the fan favorite. He wasn't the guy that came in as uh, necessarily the superstar from the region, but he is still here to represent his region in a strong way. He had a decent performance earlier on in the day, and he's going to be going up against Evan, who, I mean, he's an American export. He came down to Latin North America. He came in from the team, and he was voted in because of his skill and because of his talent. And, I mean, that's a big achievement for him, you know, being from North America, not from uh, Latin North America. And, I mean, it's just, it's very impressive. So now, Haredi's going to get that opportunity to prove himself and say, hey, look, I, I deserve to be here and I can play just as well as you can. And we already saw how vocal Evan RL was previously, saying he didn't want to come in here and just show the world that Latin America, he wanted to show the world, sorry, that Latin America and North were not the butt of all jokes. He wanted to show that they mean something and they're here to fight. He's going to have to try and take down Haredi here. 80 carry against 80 carry. We just saw a top laner taking on a jungle of idiots. What are the chances? We have the same role matchup what against are each the other. Chance? I mean, uh, well, it, it's largely dependent because uh, what we saw earlier on was actually still a lot of mid lane bans. Uh, it does seem that things like the Syndra, the um, LeBlanc, the Rise are still considered very powerful in terms of the one versus one. And so moving forward, we might see a similar thing. Or we might think, okay, these guys are more comfortable on 80 carry, so we're just going to take them off that. We'll have to see what they're going to be able to pick up here. The two AD carries will be taking on each other in the second match of this best of five series. And we're already into picks and bans. Cassiopeia and Jace being banned out by Team Fire. As we have Caitlyn and Kenan being banned out by Team Ice. I gotta be honest, I'm loving this music, man. Like, it's really getting me into the mood. Like, we're seeing all sorts of crazy bands. I mean, well, I say crazy bands. These are pretty consistent for what we saw earlier on. Mm -hmm. The addition of Jace has now been added to the list, Kenan. Uh, very potent in terms of the one versus one. He's actually surprisingly good mid laner. Quinn and Syndra now being added as well. So there's still a lot of AD carries left available. You cook up something like the Ash. I've heard that Ezreal is actually pretty potent in the one versus one as well, especially early on in the levels. But remember that that Susan has been let through. Yeah, we saw that bend out earlier. We'll have to see if it's going to be locked in here for Team Ice. But already Team Fire, already sticking to his guns, wow. sticking to an AD carry. He picks up Ash going with the exhaust and ignite. But it is going to be Nasus locked in here for Evan RL. Now remember, Team Ice, they have a one game advantage. So they can afford to be a little bit more out there with this pick. He's decided he's still going to go for the farm route, but he's actually going to change it up for more of a, a pushing farm style rather than the last hitting kind. You know, this is much more efficient. This is much easier. Who cares about last hits when you could clear the entire wave with a single ability? And no exhaust coming out for Evan RL. He's gone for the flash wow. of the Nasus. Coward. Coward, you in say. my opinion. You know, I like, say very smart. Smart, no. Coward. I mean, <laughs> who runs escape spells in a one versus one? It's do or die. Hey, this is coming from the man who told Rusty they have to take Flash Ignite on Lisa. Well, Where was the exhaust bit? Because yes. I wanted to give him the opportunity to run away from me, okay? that I mean, I have to give him that right, you know? Not everyone can stare into the face of death and be okay with it. So I wanted to give him the opportunity to leap. Apparently Rusty couldn't. He was the one that fell in that 1v1 match. We'll have to see who's going to take this second match here. Nasus against Oh, Ash he Vegas. changed it. He changed up. He's changed to the exhaust ignite. There we are. He can look death in the face and say, I will take you on. We'll do that. <laughs> Let's see if you can do just that. Because no flash on the Howling Abyss because we're about to go down for the next showdown. Uh, show, showdown snow. It's no doubt showdown. It's a little bit of a tongue. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a classic matchup. Nasus versus Ash. Uh, very common in the Summoner's Rift. Uh, no, obviously I'm kidding. See, the problem is it's really hard for me not to call him Susan because if you read Nasus backwards, it spells Susan. So all of me, all of me, m all of my mates and I like to call him Susan the Friendly Puppy. Um, He's apparently beatboxing right now to the beats, and Ash is thoroughly enjoying them. Yeah, already he's just Tesla. dancing to the sick beats that Evan RL is laying down right now. Minions have finally spawned on the Howling Abyss. <laughs> and <l> like <laughs> you mentioned earlier, Vetus, it is going to be that AP Nasus, which we expected. Yep, so he's going to be going for the, uh, just confirm, I do believe he will have taken some points in his E. Yep, yes, he has. Uh, and so he's just going to go for that early wave kit. Now, you actually have a fair amount of damage. Like, it should certainly not be underrated. So maybe at level 6, he goes for an all-in. Uh, but again, against Exhaust, like, it becomes very difficult to try and commit to that. And Ash is still very good at kiting you, even through the Wither. So I think that the farm game will be 
the main priority, but it's range versus melee. And if you if you make one mistake, it's these small bits of farm that really count towards getting the edge in that farm game. Well, already to start things off, Heredi's got some decent harass down on towards FNRL, chipping away at him every chance he gets. Both of them hit level two at the exact same time here, both trying to farm up as much as they possibly can. But FNRL not having the best of time here on the Howling Abyss so far. Well, he's still even on farm, and that's the priority for him. Note, for those at home, Desperate to learn how to play Nasus mid in the one versus one. He has decided to take with the second. I think a large part of that is because he's preparing around a potential all-in of the Ash, because now that she's level two, she will have taken points in a W, taken points in the Q, which actually gives her a decent amount of damage, especially against only a level two Nasus, who doesn't really have that much armor in his kit. Uh, so he's just saying, okay, I'm going to skill with her just so that if the Ash does decide to hard engage on me, I can at least just disengage almost immediately. And he's been able to wave clear really effectively so far, Vedas. He's ahead in CS by three minions, and Heredi has not been able to push his minion wave into the turret except for the first wave thing. I'm going to be honest, shocking, Heredi, uh, the fact that you are missing these last hits as an AD carry main, right? There's no... I have no mercy here in the one versus one. <laughs> if you're going to play for the farm game, then you've got to be prepared because this is your strategy. You've got to make sure that you land those last hits. And right now, he is falling a little bit behind. But he can't afford to lose these two minions right now, okay? Now, another thing we should note about the tower is it does a little bit more damage. So no longer do you want to do one hit on a caster minion and then let the tower hit and then hit it. All you need now is tower hit and you kill it with a basic attack. And so right. it's very important that you're aware of how much damage the tower actually does because it is very different to your standard summoner's room. Oh, we'll I have to keep that one in mind. Evan RL so far just farming it up, absolutely ignoring Heredi. Every single time he gets harassed by the Ash, he just does not care. Has popped a health potion. Seems like he wants to head back to base and pick up a couple of extra items. He's well on his way for the long game here, Vidius. 25 minutes to 19. Oh, look at that. Double Doran's ring. Mm. He's just showing off that bling right now. Coming back to lane, stacking up the AP. Currently sitting on roughly, I would say about... Ooh, he's sitting on 71 ability right power right now. So. Given that his E has a pretty good ratio on it, it's, it's just going to add to his wave clear even more. And the fact that uh, Heredi is missing all this early farm is, is honestly really going to hurt him. It's going to force Heredi to go back to base as well. Evan RL picking up a lot of minions here. is now about six minions ahead of Heredi. That's a full minion wave, and he should be able to shove this next wave in towards Heredi's tower. So Heredi being put on the back foot. You know, you have to wonder why you'd have why you'd go for it. Like, I can understand the Ash, but like, it's about understanding the one versus one meta. And when you think of champions like Pantheon, when you think of like, hey, maybe he's gonna bring out the Nazis. You know, you always have to be prepared. And I feel like Ash isn't the safest blind pit. You know what I mean? Like, because neither of them can see what the other team is picking until it's locked in. Then you can prepare to play around it. And I feel like that if you're the Ash, maybe you do go for the Flash. Maybe you use it aggressively, though. Like, you know, you manly dive in. You, you try to try and force him back as often as you can. But when you're running Exhaust Ignite, you'd think you have a lot of kill pressure. But with the Wither, it's actually very hard to close the gap against the Nazis and really exert that range pressure that you have. See, Heredi was trying to pull the minion wave closer back towards his turret. Still about seven minions behind Evan RL. He will hit level six shortly, so we'll have to see if he can make a play with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. But level six also gives Evan RL a lot of safety with his own ultimate. The problem for Heredi right now is that he's actually going to get level six behind Evan RL, so he can't even take advantage of any level spike. Evan RL isn't even interested in trying to kill him. He knows he has the farm lead. He knows that if he just keeps his playstyle up, he's eventually going to win. And I mean, yes, it's a reliable strategy, but this is not the strategy I personally could take. It's it, Again, as I mentioned, it's do or die. You have to kill your opponent. Oddie's playstyle earlier, that's that's my kind of playstyle in the 1v1. So that's what you want to see a little bit more? That's what seems. I want to see more of. You know, I mean, I can, uh, I can respect the calculated playstyle. It definitely makes a lot of sense. Oh, it comes the arrow. He's going for it already. Chasing down Evan RL. He's popped the ultimate. Uses the exhaust as well. Now they're going for that five. Perfect Knight's getting put down. Ash is trying to kite backwards. Evan RL, can oh! he do it? He can as he puts down the final E to pick up first blood. Oh, hooray. Already he feels like, I can do this, I can do this, I can outplay him, but Evan used the E so early on that by the time, because of how extended the fight was, he was able to get a second proc of it off and there was no flash on Heredi. He'd used his summoner spells and oh man, that was...